Um, a few years ago, I was engaged with the Veterans Affairs, which is the federal organization that takes care of the needs of U.S. veterans, on a project that aimed to identify veterans with high probability of committing suicide. And while I was engaged in this project, I found this um, piece from the New York Times, where a person named Barry was found by an algorithm um, to be at a high risk of committing suicide. And Barry wanted to tell his story to the world, but he also wanted to remain anonymous. So they only gave us his first name. But they also gave us a few other details. He is a decorated veteran. He, was, he fought in 1968 in Vietnam, and he's 69 years old. So I thought to myself, well, can I find more details about Barry and maybe, you know, discover who he is? So I went online to this website called the Hall of Valor Project, and I plugged in the name Barry. And guess what? There are only 30 people with the name Barry uh, who are decorated veterans. Now, if you limit this to 1968, you get only 15, and so on. So we already understand that it's easy enough to identify individuals, even if you take away direct identifiers. Um, in the jargon of uh, privacy, direct identifiers are things like names, uh, addresses, phone numbers, and so on. And because of these privacy concerns, uh, first of all, it's difficult to find granular data, which is non-aggregate data. Um, the identification is um, still insufficient, and the common solutions that are aggregate data are often um, not enough to do interesting and intricate prediction models. We need data, and I'm sure that everyone in this room can identify with um, the fact that there aren't a lot of data sets, open data sets out there. Synthetic data can be a solution to this problem. What is synthetic data? It is fictitious data that is derived from real individuals, real data. Um, it contains um, none of the individuals in the original data, so you can look at these data as avatars, and it should, um, um, it should be, um, have the utility of the original data and uh, the privacy content, uh, such that it can be shared. But first, some introduction. Hi, I'm Noah. I work at Ernix, which is a software company that provides advanced analytics for insurance and banking. And before that, I worked at MDClone, which is a software company that provides the same for healthcare. And these two industries, healthcare and insurance, and other industries as well, suffer from the same problems that we uh, talked about, which is in healthcare, uh, patient data is often siloed, it's not available publicly because the information of the patients uh, is such that it can harm them in the future. And the same for insurance, if you want to um, do pricing optimization and things like this, you need granular data at the individual level. So, usually there is a trade-off between utility and privacy. That's uh, like the main issue that we need to face when we create synthetic data. Now, the ideal solution would be to retain maximum utility and have maximum privacy. Uh, but obviously, that's not possible because when you take care of privacy, you usually degrade the utility of the data. And in reality, there is some acceptable trade-off uh, that gives you something in between. And what this trade-off is depends on the industry. So there are different metrics for different industries. In healthcare, um, the metrics are more documented, there are more um, industry standards. In insurance, it's not so easy. And to illustrate this trade-off, Let's take a look at these two images here. The one on the left is an original image of a brain scan. And what is an image? It's a tabular data set that contains millions of rows and five columns, X, Y for the location of the pixel and RGB for the color of the pixel. 
And you can think of these collection of pixels as a population. You can think of them as uh, rows in the data set that are individuals. Now, <coughs> you can do um, prediction models, and you can study this population from different angles. For example, you can measure the width and the circumference of this blue blob uh, over there. And um, also know that there is a tiny red blob. Now, this has the potential of uh, infringing on the privacy of the red pixels, which you can think of as people. The red pixels are a very tiny population of people, and if I know everything about them, if I can measure them very accurately, then I'm infringing on their privacy. Now, on the right-hand side, you have a synthetic version of this image, and if you look from where you're sitting, then you're probably not seeing many differences between the left and the right images, but there are differences. Because if you look at the, at the inset, you will see that you can't measure this uh, blue stain anymore very accurately as you could in the original data. And the red stain doesn't exist anymore. And why? What did the algorithm do? It mixed up the pixels that were different from their neighbors. So the, the areas, the patches, which are the same, that have the same derivative, mostly stay the same. But in areas where you have uh, a, a, a fast change between colors or between locations, uh, these are the areas that are important for privacy. Now, there's a trade-off. On the one hand, you can study this population as a whole, but on the other hand, we are still maintaining privacy of really small groups. Okay, so how do we generate synthetic data? And actually, there's a lot of solutions out there, some of them uh, even open source solutions, but they all have um, very high level things in common. You start from left to right. On the left, you have an original data set, which is an oversimplification. It's only two dimensional. It has very nice uh, distinct clusters. And what you do is you try to estimate the probability density in the middle, and then you forget about the original data. Now you have only this density, and from this, you resample. So what are you left with? You're left with clusters that look very much like the original, but they don't have the same exact um, observations. And if you do, it's because you had many, many close neighbors. Now, what is privacy? Privacy is targeting a specific individual. If this individual has a lot of similar individuals like him, then you're not really targeting him. What you're usually targeting are outliers, someone who is unique in some traits. OK, switching gears to a realistic data set, and I'm sure that everyone here who has ever competed in Kaggle uh, knows this data set. It describes the passengers uh, aboard the Titanic on its uh, maiden voyage, which was also its last. And you have uh, many features here. Um, you have names, which are already suspicious to us in terms of synthetic data. You have whether they survived or not, and other features like age, sex, number of siblings, and so on. And we want to create a synthetic version of this data set and also test it for utility and for privacy. How do you test utility? Where, well, you start with the basics. You start with the univariate distributions. So here I put up a table one of original versus synthetic. You can see that the number of passengers is the same, more or less. And you have all these variables, uh, whether they survived, the age, and you can do statistical tests and see whether this data uh, is the same. It should not be exact. It should be statistically similar, but not exactly the same. Uh, if you look at the bottom of this table over here for embarked, you see um, a value which is called censored, and I'll explain in, in a minute what it is. It's a new value that did not exist in the original data. 
Okay, so now you need to check more uh, complex things like correlations. Or, and more specifically, the similarity in correlations. In the bottom, you have correlations or similarities between numerical variables, and the scale goes from 0.89, um, uh, 98, sorry, to 1. So uh, in all the variables, the correlations between original and between synthetic are very similar. Again, they are not exact. Now, on the top, you have the scale goes from 0 to 1. Why? Because you have two variables for which it's not allowed that the original is like the synthetic. What are they? They are the names and the ticket number. Both of them are unique. So I cannot expose the name or the ticket number. And actually, it's not even relevant for research. If I want to do a research on a population, I don't need to know the name of the individual. In the ticket number, there might be some component which is relevant to where they were sitting, but the ticket number itself is not, that does not really matter for prediction models. Uh, and of course, if you're talking about utility, there are more complex things uh, that you can measure. You can measure uh, whether the prediction model does the same uh, with, with a model trained on original versus synthetic on a test set that you take out uh, and is common to both of them. Now, what about privacy? In privacy, I told you before that I cannot expose names and tickets, and the algorithm has produced a value called censored. And it did that automatically. I didn't have to tell it, this is a name, you have to hide it. It did it automatically because it saw only one of each. Now, it gets more complicated than that because sometimes combinations of values can be unique. For example, there can be only one male in cabin A. Rest are female, just as an example. So the algorithm would have to censor one of those values in order not to expose the single male in cabin A. Um, what about numeric variables? Well, in the original data, you have three people who paid over $500 for their fare. And we can already guess that these were the aristocrats who paid a lot of money and were rescued first. And the synthetic algorithm cannot output them because they're a too small of a group. So as you can see, the synthetic data did not output those three people, as it should. Okay, so I want to leave you with the thought that um, synthetic data can be a paradigm shift. It can allow us to think differently about data sharing, uh, about what can be done that was not uh, possible a few years ago, and I think everyone in this room who is concerned about data availability can relate to this. Thank you very much. <laughs>